Hi, I'm Dan, and if you're new to homebrewing, so am I. Welcome to my adventures in homebrewing. Hey everybody, it's Dan, and it's that time once more to go around the world one more time and have a beer or two along the way. Thank you so much for coming out and joining us again. Uh, first, let's say thanks to Ryan Oxton from Spike Brewing for coming back on the show. Uh, it, we had a little problems with the first time we did the interview with Ryan, so we redid it. Uh, lots of information there from Spike. Go and check him out. Fantastic guy. Fantastic equipment. I can't speak any more highly of Spike equipment. It, it is really, really good stuff. And also, I gotta say a quick thanks to our sponsor, Escarpment Laboratories, for keeping us brewing and making awesome beer. With that said, let's stay tuned, and we will be right back after this word from the sponsor. Hey, it's Dan here one more time, and I'm happy to say that we are now, or should I say my podcast, is now sponsored by Escarpment Laboratories. Yeast production for the fermentation of the exceptional craft beer. Whether your kit is on the stovetop or in a commercial brew house, wholesale yeast and quality control for the profitable pro brewer. Community engagement and education for the discerning home brewery. If you are a craft brewer and you love using quality yeast, then you really do need to check out Escarbon Laboratories. Hey everybody, we are back and this week <laughs> we have Mark Price from Brewer's Friend with us and we are going to talk about some of the new stuff that we've got planned for the app that you have on your phone. So you don't have to haul your computer out to use Brewer's Friend. You can be out in the brewery or in your garage or in the backyard, in your basement, and you can just use your phone and away you roll. I mean, it'll make a life a little easier, lots of cool toys. So enough of me yapping. Mark, how are we doing, brother? Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me on here. Um, I'm doing good. How are you? Good, man. So let's tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Brewer's Friend. Sure. Uh, so I'm Mark. Uh, I've been brewing about 10 years or so. I uh, started out in Michigan. Um, hello, everybody listening from the Michigan Homebrew Festival. Hope you're having a great time this weekend. Uh, and I got started from um, Lorena Uper if you, you've had her on previously. Um, she invited me to join Brewer's Friend after some uh, testing from her that she had reached out to me. I gave some input, uh, had been a member online uh, as well as various homebrew uh, community forums for a few years. Um, and I have a little, I had, I don't really work on it anymore, but a little um, brew in a bag calculator that helps people with the volumes and temperature calculations. Um, so I had some input for Brewer's Friends, uh, uh, tested some things out, and then uh, they re reached out to me to do just some uh, quality testing for some updates that they had planned. And then that's kind of how I got started. Uh, and here I am just evolving along the way, wearing more hats as the days go on. Isn't that the truth, though? It, like, as soon as you get good at one thing... They're like, well, let's give you a few more to see how you handle it. Just and it just keeps coming and coming and coming. It kind of sounds familiar. It kind of, kind of like I don't know. It's like my former life in the military. You get one subordinate, you, then all of a sudden you have two, you have three, then you have a whole section, then you have a platoon, and it just keeps growing and growing. So, but yet I digress. Let's talk beer. So, the app. It is an absolutely fantastical little piece of kit. So I'm gonna see if I can just show people what I'm talking about here. So. The, you probably can't see it guys but yeah it's all blacked out so um so much for that idea there we go that mark's got it mark's got it so there we go so um the app is on your phone it is a fantastic piece of kit but apparently there were a few bugs with it um and things that needed to be tweaked uh yeah well um the main reason for launching the app is so you have a dedicated uh piece of software on your phone um, rather than having to pull up the website and uh, just formatting and layouts and things like that don't really always translate as well. Uh, so while we have gone through various updates uh, using more modern code bases, uh, which will really help update the app more frequently, um, there's always you know bugs and issues along the way. So the developers, um, Sorry, the developers will release an update and then I test it 
Um, if there's necessary external testing needed, we'll reach out to a group of people on the forums. Um, if you're interested, you can always post and uh, either reach out to myself, Price of Spring, or Lorena at Uper on the forums, and we can uh, include you on our public beta testers. That's very cool. So with the app as it is right now, because I don't think the one I have is the new version, because I don't think you've released it. Okay, so most likely what we're going to do is, so everyone's going to hear this part. Uh, we're going to release this tonight. <laughs> so I'll be busy okay. doing a little, quick little edit on this. Yes, I edit this stuff so I can edit out most of my potty mouth people. So <laughs> so uh, what I like about the app a lot, because you have all your recipes right there in front of you, alphabetized, whatever else. You don't have to go into all the folders like you do on on the website, which makes my life a little easier. I like the calculators. Um, and the only part that I find, um, a little difficult is, uh, when you have to go and do, um, things like, uh, you gotta do your notes and, and, and then there's like, you gotta go and say, okay, I've done that, done the completed brew day or I've completed the boil it's just step by step by step. And it's, it's, it, it gets to be like, okay, I gotta go here. And that's like, and all of a sudden you make a mistake and all of a sudden all your data is gone. Yeah, the, uh, the brew sessions, um, depending on how detail oriented you're going to be on taking your notes and importing them, um, definitely can take some time because you have to go to the brew session and then go to that log entry, pick the right correct log entry, and then scroll down to what data you want to enter. Um, generally, I usually just end up entering like the volumes mm -hmm. um, and the gravity readings. I don't really care about temperatures or what step I'm at. So in the software itself, when I'm recording, I just enter my start volume, my end volume for brew day, and then my OG and final gravity when I package. Yeah. And that's usually about it. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do. And it's pretty much bang on all the time. Um, but I do, I have started getting into taking more detailed notes and where uh, I find that either something's lagging or something's, or the efficiency is really high or, or things like that. So I know where I made my mistake. Uh, so now, with the newer version of the app that's going to be coming out probably sometime in the near future, what are we going to be looking at for, for parts? Um, for like new features coming? Yeah. <laughs> Sneak preview. Well, uh, yeah, that's uh, the idea. <laughs> yeah, so the thing that I'm most excited about um, and one of the projects that I initiated and pushed for is an update to the MASH guidelines um, because that's that was one of the main reasons that I made the Brunerback calculator in the first place was I wasn't happy with any of the software out at the time. Um, just, I don't understand why some software makes you, makes you enter the volumes and not like calculate your pre-boil pre -boil mm -hmm. volume and your runoffs automatically because they already know what you're starting with and they know what your grain absorption is. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try and do all those steps for you automatically. That's pretty cool. Very, so very cool. It'll cover like 95% of people's processes and equipment. Um, you can either pick if you're doing a no sparge or single sparge. Um, and then as long as you're not fly sparging, it'll say, okay, your equipment says you need this much. You're going to boil down to this much. And then it'll pre-fill all of the steps for you. It'll pre-fill your uh, calculated temperature for infusion, the mm -hmm. resulting temperature and gravities even in the mash. Um, and your runoff volumes. That's pretty cool. So now with the app, is there anything that uh, anything that's being improved upon for what's currently in the app? Not for newer features, but sure. anything that's in the app, the calculators, are they going to be improved? Or is I know I'm pretty sure you can build recipes inside the app too. Yeah. So are things like that going to be improved upon? Uh, they will be at, at from what exists right now online versus what will be available on the app at launch. Um, the biggest difference is going to be obviously visuals mm -hmm. uh, and how you go about doing stuff. But the only the major feature that is different is going to be the water chemistry. Um, if you're familiar with it at all online, uh, it requires quite a bit of clicking around and linking things and then updating things. Um, so we've kind of that all in the background 
Um, so if I recommend playing with it, if you haven't yet, you can pull up your recipe, put in your water or just update your water uh, profile. And then just put in your ingredients. Like you can put in your calcium chloride as part of your recipe mm -hmm. and it'll tell you what your pH is. You don't have to link or update or tell it what profile you're targeting for or say, if, if it's in your other ingredients in the recipe, it'll do all that stuff for you. So if you use the water profile that you already have, say like for me in Ottawa, if I use my city of Ottawa profile, it'll already calculate how much of each one I'm like magnesium or, or sodium or whatever else I'm going to need to put in. It'll already tell me what I'm going to need. Yep. Well, no, not quite yet. Um, okay. It'll tell you what your resulting profile will be. Okay. All right. All so right. it just it goes away with having a standalone water chemistry calculator and then it's mm -hmm. integrated into the recipe builder. Okay. So so army army guy brain, so I'm a little slow. <laughs> so um if I have a profile like for the city of Ottawa on in my already in there and I pull that in, it'll it it's just telling me what my profile is and then what the end state's going to be. So I won't be able to figure out exactly how much of each one I'm going to need to put in. One second. Let's see if I can pull it up. All right. So if I pull up this, oh, I don't have any, of course. That's okay. Um, <laughs> so if I pull up a uh, recipe on mm -hmm. here, you can see that the other ingredients are in the recipe. If I go in and add let's say some acid, lactic acid. And let's just say we're putting in 10 milliliters. And then it'll just add to that and it'll automatically adjust the mash pH without having to do anything separately in a separate calculator or updating a, a loaded profile in the water chemistry calculator. All you have to do is add the ingredients to your recipe. Oh, well, that's pretty awesome. So what really brought on the big push to change the app? I mean, I was using it and I was, I was getting into using the app. I, I liked it a lot. Um, I mean, compared to going like step by step by step by step by step inside of the, the cloud-based stuff, the app was actually doing a lot for me. But what came along for the big push? Um, there's two big pushes, uh, reasons for it, at least. Um, one is just to have like an updated code base. It's more nerdy talk, like it doesn't affect you guys as much. Mm -hmm. But from an updating like maintenance standpoint, uh, switching over to this new code base will help us keep web and the app more in line so that we're not trying to manipulate and update two different separate things that aren't talking to each other. Okay. So that was one. And then... Uh, updating the overall look and feel of the app and the website will come later um, so that they're more in line with modern uh, aesthetics. Okay. So when you're building your recipe inside of the app, will it automatically, because I know you're able to do like inventories and things on the cloud-based stuff, will it automatically link into what you have for your inventories? And if you, if it, you need to order something, it'll tell you, or can you order online through the app now as well? Um, that is a good question. I am not sure if you can order. I don't think so, but let's find out. Um, as far as inventory handling, yes, that'll have the same features. Um, and there was an update maybe a week or so ago um, on the online inventory system. So we, uh, we made it a little bit smarter on uh, finding matches. Mm -hmm. Like you might have used base malt from Bruce and it was like, well, you don't have that specific base malt in your inventory. So we didn't find it. Um, so now it's a little bit smarter and doing those sort of things. Um, I don't see a way for a shopping list. Ah, maybe that's something you guys could add in next time. Pending. Pending. Ah, pending. Catch all phrase. <laughs> all right. So is there anything about the app that you think anybody else anybody should know as it is right now, how it can help them. I mean, I know how it helps me out. Um, 
I mean, it helps me greatly in the sense of the timers, the calculators. Uh, it's I find it easy to to keep if I'm like I'm talking with my buddies about beer and all that, and like, oh, do you have that recipe? Oh yeah, I got it here. Here, I'll show you. I can pull it up right away. Um, are you able to share those? Like, email those to people if you want to. Are you able to the recipes? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a few ways you can recipe share. Uh, one, you can just make it a public recipe and then you can share the URL to anybody. They mm -hmm. don't even have to be a Brewers from member. Obviously, I want you to be. Uh, so you can also enjoy it, but uh, they're public. So if you share it, you can send it to anybody, just like a normal website link. Um, there's also ways where you can make it publicly accessible, kind of like Microsoft Office does, but not uh, searchable on the website. So if okay. you go to the right now in the recipe tools on the website, um, open recipe tools and then share. It'll pull up a little window where you can choose either public or not public and share via, via URL. And then if you want to share it with your followers or not. Um, so that if you don't want it public knowledge, but you want to share it with a friend, you can do so. Okay. Because I know there's been a couple of times I've tried to share URLs with people and they're like, yeah, this is no good. But I'm like, yeah. it, admit it. I was like, it's public. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if that does come up and it's public, feel free to send us a ping and we'll uh, investigate. All right. I will, I'll, I'll take care of that then. Because I tried sharing like a blueberry cream ale uh, recipe with some of the guys that I'm, I'm in a club with called the Brewtubers. And they were like, no, no, yeah. it's not working, Dan. What are you doing to us? I'm like, okay, I'll do screenshots. <laughs> it went from there. So... Um yeah, if, if that doesn't work and you still need to and, uh, you know, you want to do it right away, uh, there's other features on exporting. So you could export it via like a text. The text file. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I did. I did it as a text file. Uh, I copied it and or screenshotted it and then just <laughs> send it to them. And I'm like, I'm not messing around tonight, guys. It's late. I'm going to bed. Have a good one. <laughs> so what else do you think people need to know about the app? I mean, I know it's a great piece of kit, but why should people use this thing? I mean, in general, if you're not already using a recipe software of any kind, uh, definitely recommend it. Um, it. It really just makes everything easier and predictable. Uh, not necessarily consistent because every recipe and every piece of equipment is going to be different, but it, it, hits, it helps you hit your volumes, your targets, find out if you're off base or not. Uh, when you're developing your recipe, are you using ingredients that are common to that recipe style? Um, are you using common combinations of ingredients? So you can pull up like Citra in an IPA and be like, well, Citra pairs well with this other hop. Um, and we're working on some features on how we can use that a little bit more, uh, mm -hmm. communicate it easier, um, find out how far off from the recipe styles for BJCP guidelines you are. Um, bunch of other stuff like one of I didn't even know until uh, somebody brought it up in the brew club that and I probably should have so anybody listening from Bruce friend, I'm sorry um, there's the label generator you can code to your um, brew session batch numbers and then you know you find a bottle 19 years down the line you're like I don't remember what that was, but let me pull it up. And then and there, there's there it oh, is. All the questions you have about well, what ingredients did I use? I don't remember. That was yeah years ago. The label I, generator initially was like a godsend because I was able just to print it off on regular paper, mm -hmm. and I found the easy hack where you just take milk, put it on the bottle, stick it on, go over the go over the paper with the milk again, and you just let it dry. And there's your label done. Crazy, right. Yeah, it's it's great, and it comes, and you can get the QR codes on the labels. So someone says, "Oh, I want the recipe." You have it. Just scan the code. Done. Yeah, uh, that, that was very cool. So, now, if someone wanted to say maybe get those labels and have them printed on, say, like a um, like an actual beer label, like you see on a can or something like that, are they able to get those reproduced? as a sticky label through you guys or is that or do they need to just save it and then send it there's no way to order labels um i don't know if we would be able to i'm sure we could contact a vendor or something okay. um, i can ask if see if that's something uh the owners are interested in pursuing mm -hmm. 
Um, but right now, yeah, just save it, download it, share it with your uh, service provider. <laughs> Whoever your creative artwork dude is, they'll uh, put some labels out for you. That's usually me in Photoshop. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, now um, the app. So you're saying we had a, a rough look at what it's going to look like now. So the way it's laid out right now, that's going to be gone by the wayside and it's going to be a totally new look and feel. Is it going to be more user friendly? Is it going to be uh, a little easier to navigate? Um, for the existing app, you're referring to the like iOS app? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I never, honestly, I've never opened it. Um, I don't have an Apple computer and I know that if, by the time I joined Group's friend, it was already legacy and hasn't been updated in several years. Okay. Uh, so I can't really say anything about that really besides please don't use it. Use the website instead. Um, it's okay. much more to uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the, new, the new mobile apps um, versus the web in comparison, I think are uh, much more modern. Uh, mm -hmm. They look a lot cleaner and neater. Um, things are still pretty easy to navigate. I think that we still have a few little things we can work on, on uh, user experience, on going through the steps on doing things, like little things, like when you're adding an ingredient, I don't want you to have to save it and exit and then mm -hmm. re-add a new ingredient, like just put a next button in there. So we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be doing those little tweaks as we go along, probably after your launch. Because mm -hmm. um, we want to get it launched as soon as possible, uh, as long as there's no major features missing or broken or anything like that, of course. So right now, is the updated app out for Android, or is it just not out for anybody? Uh, it's not public knowledge for anybody. It, there is a uh, subset of users on the beta forum on Bruce from mm -hmm. that we've uh, included in testing. So some people have gotten it. I would probably guess it's around 40 or so users. Um, and then it's been submitted for publication to uh, both Android and iOS. So what is some of the feedback you're getting f from the beta testers for the app? Like, what are they saying about it? Of course. Um, usually it's uh, the feedback we're getting is we need to fix something that I didn't catch yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, the huge surprise for me is um, how many people use the brew timers? Mm -hmm. uh, except timers. I like I never had one, I guess, when I started learning the brew. So I was just like, oh, I just I use a mechanical timer in my kitchen because I brew inside. <laughs> so I'm just like, so I don't think about those th sort of things. I'm like, wow, that's really popular. I had no idea. Oh yeah, they're, they are a godsend because I can have my phone in my pocket and I'll have started the timers. And when the timer goes off, because I have, well, I'm an Apple geek. I admit it. Uh, I have an Apple Watch, and the timer will go off on my watch and say, "Okay, the, you need to do this now." I'm like, right. "All right, let's do it," and then and off we go. Those timers are 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 a godsend, absolute godsend. Yeah, I, I uh, that that was one of the trickier things that we have to still kind of work through. Um, the brew timers, I know, are super popular, especially with it being a mobile app. Um, so right now we actually have them disabled. We're trying to figure out like software wise, some, some devices will wake up and some devices won't wake up, mm -hmm. um, when you put it to sleep and close it, or they'll wake up, but the time will restart instead of continuing while it was in sleep mode. Um, so that's something that we, we definitely want to address as soon as possible, because I know how, how popular, <laughs> uh, important it mm -hmm. is for a mobile app. Oh, absolutely. I mean, between the timer and the calculators, the calculators, I love the quick calculators. Because uh, I find, what's that? Tell me more. Which ones? Uh, the strike. I love the, because it tells me how much water I need to have in for strike and the temperature it needs to be at. So once it comes up and I'm like, okay, let's do this. And I'm like, all right, it's at the temperature. I can start my mashing. And then I'm like, all right, the temperature needs to come down bring my temperature down to where it needs to be for, for the duration of the infusion of the mash and I'll do my thing. And it's, it's great. Um, and it's just like, okay, so if I'm doing say like six gallons, I need 3.5 gallons 
of water in the kettle to bring up the strike to 170 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and we're good to go like done and it, it's great because you got things like that and then oh, what's the other one that I used um, before I started um, using a bright tank I was using uh, the Cooper's carb drops okay and I was just like all right so I know now like for that I need to use so many per each one i mean the bag tells me but i go oh, by i uh, use brewer's friend just to make sure but that's something i did notice on uh on the brewer's friend that if you're on the website itself you go to the drop down and it says how you how are you carbonating what are you using and those carb drops are not there <laughs> oh there's a pen i told you're lorena right. this and she didn't <laughs> cooper's carb Jobs. Yep. All right. So anything like that, feel free to uh, you can either post on the Brewers Friend uh, feature requests, or you can email me at mark at brewersfriend.com or uh, Youper. I think her email is Youper at Brewers Friend. I think Don't so. Comment. No, 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 no. Or you go into the actual Brewers Friend group on Facebook and send the guys a message, and most likely you'll get Mark, Nick, or Lorena answering you back, and they're like, "We're on it." And if you don't want to make it public, feel free to message us. Either way, we'll take care of it. There you go. So is there anything else you think we should know about this fantastical piece of engineering that's coming our way? Um, let's make sure I didn't miss anything. It's mostly the same features you're used to. Um, so it's not too many new crazy ideas. Um, coming out just yet just scrolling through i don't think i uh yeah really the the main difference is just the look and feel um user workflow and the water chemistry those are the huge ones and then background stuff for us yeah i mean i'll admit right now uh water chemistry is like a taboo thing with me it's, <laughs> it's like it's there yes you don't touch it but you know you should. <laughs> yeah, I was a few years too. I understand. So, I mean, when I got back into doing this, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Whatever else. I got all the books. I started, yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that. I've been working at a brewery now for the past four years. And it's just like, I asked my boss about water chemistry and he's just like, he's just like, dude, you're going to make my head explode. Please don't. Please don't. I mean, what it says, it took me long enough reading the water chemistry book that's put up by the American Homebrewers Association that I was ready to shoot myself. <laughs> water by uh yeah. Um, yeah. He says very technical. He, yeah, he was like, it's extremely informative. It helped me out a lot, but um, there's a lot of places uh, where the water really does not need adjusting. And he says, and if you believe, believe me or not, Dan for what you're doing at the level you're doing water chemistry. Yeah. It's a good thing to do, but our water here, you don't need to worry about it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm trusting my boss. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, I think it's one of the things that if it's wrong, you're going to notice and you should fix it. If it's not a problem, you can ignore it. It just won't be as optimal as the beer could be. You know, exactly. Like if you want to make the the adjustments to your sulfide or your chloride, or just your pH just a little bit, and it's still it was already within good pH, um, it'll make your good beer slightly better. But it'll if it's a problem, uh, and like you have chloramine or something in your water, you don't want to drink band aids. So yeah. please treat that. I I always drop cabinet tablets in my water. I do. <laughs> I just don't like, like you said, the band aid taste. I don't take that chance. I just, regardless, I always put Canon tablets. You never know when the the guy in the water lab is going to be like, mm, I think this one needs some. Exactly. They don't no, they don't. They don't. So, Mark, I'm going to say, dude, that's it for tonight. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Me. No worries. Thank you for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Guys, check out brewersfriend.com for the online cloud-based software go into your app store for your respective device be it android be it apple be it 
BlackBerry, God knows if they're still around, or and go from there. Download the app, or when it come, when the new version comes out, download the app when the new version comes out. Use it. I am telling you right now. I am not trying to steer you wrong. It is a fantastic piece of kit to use. Mark, thank you for your time, and guys. Thanks for coming along for the ride and a beer or two along the way, and we'll see you on the other side.